initial thought is that I hope that Paul George is as committed to what he said as he laid out in the press conference, right? Because I think one of the things coming out of his L.A. tenure was that the idea that Paul would say one thing and then either contradict himself saying it uh, the exact opposite on a podcast or another interview or not live up to that on the floor. And and I think the the example I want to focus on for there is – the idea that he brought up today where, you know, kind of like, what's your role? What are you here to do? Go get buckets, put the ball in the hoop, and defend the other team's best player. And more importantly, that that second part, defend the other team's best player. Because we know for sure at his peak, Paul George was one of the best defenders in the league. It was a, a top three DPOY candidate, was an all-first team, all-defense guy. In OKC, and I think a lot of our discussion about him, Devon, has been this assumption that not only has he taken the physical step back that he can't be that guy, but he also, from a just you know workload and compete standpoint, has said, "I I need to take a step back. I can't be doing that night to night defending the best player and also you know carrying this workload on offense." So to come in day one and say, "You know that's what I'm here to do." That's encouraging to me, but I want to see some follow through because in that last playoff series against the Dallas Mavericks, he was taking long parts of the game off by, you know, defending guys in the corner, not defending the Kyries, the Lucas. And so will Paul live up to that ideal? I don't know, but I like hearing that. I like hearing from him. I'm coming in here. I want to put my hard hat on. Like I'm coming into a city that is known for hard work that wants toughness that is demanding of you. I'm not scared is what he, how he also said it. He said recently that he felt like he was on the B team in Los Angeles, which is going to make Clippers fans mad, but it's true. And now he's coming somewhere where the spotlight is on you because not only are you in a big sports market, you're in a big sports market where the team you signed for has been starved for real success for 20 plus years. And so I think he came in and he said all the right things. And I think if Paul lives up to these things, hey, I don't care about the hierarchy. I want to win. Everything takes care of itself. I want to defend the other team's best player. I'm ready to put my hard hat on and work. I'm excited about this, this, and this. And we'll get into the relationship stuff and all the other things later. I just want to see the follow through, right? Because that's the thing. It's easy to, to pander to, to say like, oh, yeah, you know, I've been having lots of cheesesteaks and all this stuff, and that's all well and good, and I'm glad that Paul seems to be embracing his new home. Not only is he excited, to your point about the family, it seems like his family's all in. Like his the, the kids that were running around had like Sixers teddy bears, sure. and everyone was yeah. wearing, you know, kind of Sixers adjacent stuff, and that was really cool to see everyone just like, Look, this is home now. There's no there's no looking back at LA. There's no looking back at the Clippers. This is it. So I love that. I love to see that, not just from him, but everyone who is kind of his support system. Now it's the next step. Now it's seeing, okay, how do you fit alongside Tyrese and Joel? How willing are you to do the dirty work on a given night and be that guy who needs to defend the best players on the other team? So I was I was encouraged by what I heard. I think he there was I don't think there was anything in there that stuck out as like a eyebrow raising moment. I think it was all great from a I'm sure the PR staff was absolutely loving that presser. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, let's see what's next. Let's see what the team looks like. And we won't be able to see that until you know late late September, early October when training camp kicks off. So that was one of the things as you just talked about the PR and how happy they had to be with that press conference because the first thing that stood out to me was he's a 14-year veteran. He's poised. He's seasoned in what he does when it comes to these types of situations. This is, of course, is something totally different coming to the East Coast as far as he's gone in the past was Indiana. And now being here, discussing all of that, taking this trip over here, the family, And all you're absolutely right, Kyle, that the one thing that stood out was the fact that he mentioned coming in, definitely want to take the opportunity to take the best player on the defensive end and get buckets. And you want to hear that. And especially when we talk and And be a closer, he mentioned be a closer and and be a guy that can not only close, but also set up things for for being a closer, discussing all of that. Uh, The fact that he laid all of that out and talking this big game 
at the age of 34. How much did we talk about it in previewing the possibility of a, a recruitment for him in free agency? And we always had to go to the age because that's where you have to start first. He's 34 years of age. You give him mm-hmm. this man $200 million. Can he live up to that? Can he follow through with it? But as you just mentioned, he's saying all of these things that he wants to do. He now has to go out there and back it up. So absolutely. you're absolutely right. When he's discussed in the past or people in the past discussing how he is seen in Los Angeles where he goes to Dodger games and he's booed by the Dodger fans and he goes to a Phillies game, you know how it's going to be, at least to start off. We don't know how it's going to be He will a get bit the later. love. He'll get the initial he's love He's going to get sure. the initial love. So, of course, that's going to ingratiate himself with the fan base. But to have his family here, one of the things that I was talking to someone with the Sixers while you know, we had that little break between, between the two press conferences – One of the things that I talked about, which we discussed on the show, they watch our show, so they know a lot of things that we say. But the one thing that I did bring up was I'm very curious to see how he follows through with everything that you just pointed out, because he wanted to be in Los Angeles. There's no secret at all. He's talked about it on his podcast. Steve Ballmer has talked about it. Actually, I give credit to Sixers. I don't Sixers fans. I don't think people have begrudged him for that. Nobody's been like, this is a, oh, he's wishy-washy. It's that. It's I I think people have... have recognized absolutely he's a california kid he wanted to play in la but when that was not really he said okay here we go two business. feet first into philadelphia yep business so but with it we we look at that and i do say because we have seen it just because we've dealt with the al horford situation mm-hmm. knowing that he probably really didn't want to do it he got a good deal and he came here to philadelphia to do what he did and he did nothing now he's back in boston winning championships now we look at paul george who did want to be there Talking the game, now I want to see it follow through. I think he has it in him. I think he still has the skill set and the wherewithal to go out there and produce the way that he does, especially with the fact that he's doing so next to two players. That's going to take a lot of that off of him. When you talked about him being stuck in a corner or disappearing for a certain amount of time during the game, well, the only person that was really on the level of either Joel Embiid or Tyrese Maxey with the Clippers consistently was Kawhi Leonard when he was out there. Other than that, he didn't have that second person to go when Kawhi Leonard was not there. Mm -hmm. Now he's going to have both, barring any injury where either one of them have to miss games, most notably Joel Embiid, as we all know. But he also spoke about that, doing his best as the closer, as the setup man to do other things to keep Joel Embiid as healthy as possible during the season, where he even mentioned... We don't want to have him isolated at the top of the key. He looked right you at took Nick the words Nurse, out of my mouth. And I was, I was sitting there cracking up like, oh, that's where <laughs> we're going. And uh, But I'm sure, again, which we'll get into the conversation that they have in, in the past, that these are things that they've discussed themselves, I'd imagine, that this has come up. So there was a lot of things I was impressed with. But when you're 34 years old, you're 14 years in, you know how to and handle he's a the smart media. Guy. He, he knows, knows what to yeah. say, what not to say, what to get through. But he said all the right things. He checked all the right boxes. Today, it's July 23rd. When we get to November 23rd, and we're talking about a few games in the books, and mm-hmm. we'll have things to pick apart. But for today, for the introductory, you watched it just like we watched it for a re- very same reason, to see what he had to say, to see how he said it, and to see how that was uh, felt. Not only with us in the room, but with the Sixers staff and then reading some comments online. And so far, at least from the things that I saw, it just seemed like for the people who had a little trepidation about the signing in general, that they're like, all right, at least at least he was good in his presser and he said all the right (laughs) things for right now. We'll get to it later. But he also pointed out how training camp is important. And that's where you really get things started. Uh, we'll get to a few other things. I don't want to jump on maybe something Kyle had to say. We don't know each other. Well, I only know one thing Kyle wants to say, so I'm going to leave it for him in case he doesn't. I'll say it. But I like what Paul George had to say today, yeah. a somewhat long press conference. He answered questions. He didn't get away like from 30 things. minutes of I thought we were questions. Gonna, I, was, I looked yeah. at the, I was like, oh, it's already 115. We might be out of here about 120, 130. No, it kept going. And uh, but it was solid. It was a solid press conference. They handled it well. He handled it well. And now we just wait for training camp preseason and the regular season to get underway to see what it actually looks like on the floor. 